Hey everyone, my name is Laura Madsen and I am the author of Disrupting Data Governance and today we're going to talk a little bit about data governance and a data governance overview in what I'm calling five and five, five tips in five minutes. And uh, so let's go. Uh, so today's data governance overview is uh, a little bit different in that we're going to look at how the book Disrupting Data Governance frames data governance because obviously if it's got disrupting in the title it probably doesn't follow some of the uh, ways of thinking about data governance. Um, the old traditional, maybe old is a bad word, but traditional ways of talking about data governance. So first and foremost, I want to uh, look at a definition of data governance that uh, I think is really sets the frame for thinking about uh, disrupting data governance in your own organization. So the definition of data governance is data governance is a downstream process meant to improve democratization of data by harmonizing disparate data into cohesive definitions and standards. As an aside, it is not a stick to beat your organization with. Uh, and I think that's really important because for so long we've used data governance as almost like the proverbial other bucket in our analytics functions. It has become so much a command and control or where we operate or operationalize our security methodologies, who can get access to what. Um, and, you know, I think that this very sort of um, command and control perspective of it is like the fox guarding the hen house. You can't protect something um, and allow it to be used broadly or democratize access to it in order to allow lots of people to see it. So one of the main things about um, democ uh, sorry, disrupting data governance is this idea that you create sort of this partnership with your uh, security teams and your privacy teams take their requirements and implement those requirements, but it is not the job of your governance function to do that work in totality. That's really just a small portion of that work effort. The other thing that I think is really important in terms of thinking about it like democratization is um, data literacy. So I you know, as we've seen the rise of data literacy in our organizations over the last few years, and I'm a big advocate for data literacy, it has to be a part of a puzzle. It can't be a thing in and of itself. Like, oh, I have data literacy and therefore everything's gonna be fine. Data literacy, data democratization, data governance, those things are all related. And I think the interesting thing is as we've, you know, as I've looked at the research around data governance and data democratization and data literacy, what we've seen is as data literacy programs have grown in popularity, this conversation about data governance and what it is and how we do it has also um, grown in popularity. And a lot of the challenge around data governance is, is what is it? Because it seems like it's everything. If you Google data governance, you're going to get a definition that's like a paragraph and a half long. So data literacy has really been the bellwether for data governance and the refurbishment of how we function as data governance professionals or data governance programs in our organizations. Uh, one thing I think is really critically important is, and I get a lot of pushback on this one, but you know, you don't put disruption in your book and expect everybody to think you're um, spot on. Uh, there is no data quality without data governance, and there is no data governance without data quality. They are indications of one another. Uh, it doesn't mean that you can't have aspects of data quality outside of governance. Uh, things like record counts, you know, I have one million in the source table, I have one million in the target table, ta-da! But that's not necessarily data quality. What I'm talking about in terms of data quality is thinking about it in terms of how people are going to actually analyze that data. Uh, so it's kind of this concept of context or fit for purpose, and you cannot have those things if you don't define it. Uh, it's you need your denominator in order to understand the numerator kind of a thing. So uh, you have to have good data governance in order to have the data quality that drives analysis, and that's the context and the fit for purpose. Which brings me to the last one, and it's not last because it's the least important, it's last because it's probably the most important. I talk about it a lot in the book, I talk about it a lot with my clients, which is 
the only reason we do any of these things is to increase the usage of our data assets. We have got to figure out how to increase the usage of our data assets. If we can't do that, we're not going to drive insights and we're not going to become more data driven. But when we approach data governance only thinking about it as a command and control and there's only one definition and there's only one right way to do that we are really instead probably introducing inconsistencies in and of themselves so i think it's very important to put a frame on all data governance programs as we are trying to drive increasing usage because then we're going to get a lot more value out of our data which will drive return on investments which is another topic that we'll talk about uh, in the future but the main thing I want you to really think about and take away from this quick video is data governance exists to drive usage of your data assets. Um, and look, I just got a ping. So <laughs> you all heard that. So anyway, again, thanks for listening. I am Laura Madsen, author of Disrupting Data Governance. It's available on Amazon. I'm also the chief executive guru at uh, Via Gurus. And um, I hope you like this video. If you do, give me some comments and uh, let me know what things you'd like to, um, like to hear in the future in my five tips in five minutes.